Hi everyone, thank you for watching on this wonderful Flat Earth Friday and as many of you know, I am currently taking some well needed time off. Once in a while, a debunking video comes along that is absolutely golden. It happened before when Professor Dave Explains absolutely destroyed the Globebusters. And it's happened again. This time, Conspiracy Cats has absolutely eviscerated Karen B on Flat Earth Sunsets. You simply cannot miss this one. See you all soon. <laughs> I'm Conspiracy Cats and Simon Dan, thank you very much for having me on your channel today. Now, one of the most frustrating things about Flat Earthers is that they very rarely try and explain how things actually work on a Flat Earth. What they try and do is use the misunderstandings of science to poke holes in the heliocentric model with often amusing results, like this. Well, what? are these flames are defying that? gravity no. by going up? Or this. I have proof right next to me that gravity does not exist. Basically, it's a tap running. And some flat earthers will go as far as trying to rewrite the laws of physics just to suit their own agenda. Mass is identical to weight, but this mass, this weight is space weight. And then sometimes a flat earther will stir curvature right in the face and point blank deny it. Like the time Ranty Flat Earth filmed this boat going over the horizon for 30 minutes and then immediately made a video denying he just filmed a boat going over the horizon. Using my own observation of the Stena Hibernia as it made its way from Haitian to the Isle of Man, I will show you how to critically analyse what we are seeing, as opposed to simply believing that you are seeing it go over Earth curve. So imagine my surprise when I came across today's video by a lady called Karen B. She's actually taken the time to explain to us in scientific detail how the sun rises and sets on a flat Earth, and I for one can't wait. Let's learn some flat Earth science. Roll the intro. Might be saying that guy. Why would they even invent gravity then? Essentially, boiling a pan of water is making oxygen then. There is no gravity, there's just up and down. Who'd have believed, really, that water isn't made of hydrogen <laughs> and oxygen? <laughs> Science. Hi everyone, this is Karen B. And in this video, I will do my best to give you the most comprehensive explanation of how the sun sets and rises on a flat earth. Oh no, what a shame. Ladies and gentlemen, I really was rooting for Karen B and I wanted her video to be a success, but she scored a spectacular goal right from the word go. You see, in this clip she's just shown us, the clouds are actually lit from underneath, which is something that is completely impossible on a flat earth and is only possible where there's curvature, which will allow the sun to be lower than the clouds relative to the observer. Now, let's see what flat earth early bird host Arwin has to say about that mistake. What do you think, buddy? Oh no. Yeah, very unfortunate for the flat earth indeed. Sorry, bud. Now, this picture here is one of my favorite examples of this that clearly shows the effect of the sun being below the clouds, and it's one of my favorite flat earth killing photographs of all time. Anyway, unperturbed, Karen B carries on with her explanation and informs us that there is a whole suite of reasons why a sun appears to set on a flat earth, beginning with the old flat earth favorite, perspective. Here we have our two horizontal planes with a perspective grid over it. You can see the trees rise up toward the horizon and get smaller in size and the clouds appear to get lower in the sky as they appear to converge into the vanishing point. Okay, so so far that sounds fair enough. Ish. Until she follows it with this. The same thing with the sun. Well, it appears Karen B has already scored a second on goal. In her original explanation of perspective, she clearly states that the trees are going to shrink as they move into the distance. You can see the trees rise up toward the horizon and get smaller in size. And that this should be the same with the sun. The same thing with the sun. But in her own video, she shows no such reduction in the size of the sun as it's apparently moving away from us. In fact, the only time that sun gets smaller is when the horizon is blocking off the bottom of it. What do you think, Arwen? Oh, no. I know. So it appears that Karen B has shown that perspective can't be the reason that the sun appears to set on a flat earth, nor can it be the reason that it appears to vanish from the bottom up while it is setting, as evidenced by Ranty Flat Earth in spectacular fashion in a live stream earlier on this year. Let's remind ourselves of what he did. Roll the intro. These are the adventures of Ranty the Flat Earther, as he explores the strange world known to Fraggles as the Globe. 
So earlier this year, in a live streamed attempt to prove that perspective does cause things to vanish from the bottom up, Ramsey Flat Earth took myself and Simon Dan down to the local racetrack. So there we have Conspiracy Cats and Simon Dan. Right, just to be clear, there are no prizes for guessing who the egg was meant to be. Um, anyway, at this point, Ranty Flat Earth was so excited about being able to show to the world that perspective and distance are the reason that things disappear from the bottom up, that he had to sprint down to the other end of the racetrack and place his P1000 camera down at the floor, and he pointed it at me and Dan. How did that work out, buddy? Yeah. He's a bit shy, you see. He doesn't want to be reminded about it. Let's take a look at the results. Show you what I caught from this side. Yes, all Ranty Flat Earth managed to prove on his own live stream was that on a flat surface, perspective doesn't cause things to vanish from the bottom up. Oh no. Exactly, Owen. Still, at least Ranty and Dan had some bonding time. Shout out to Simon Dan. <laughs> Right, let's get back to Karen B and her next example of completely made up science. The next thing that causes the sun to set and rise is our atmosphere, or atmoplane, as I like to call it. I know she said atmoplane, but I'm not impressed, because we can all make up stupid words. Can't we, Nathan Oakley? Budgie pang. Oh, by the way, Nathan, Christmas is coming up. Um, what would be your ideal gift? It would be three girlfriends. Wish I hadn't asked now. Anyway, let's get back to Karen B and her completely absurd explanation of how the Atma plane creates the sunset. Think about the ocean. There are many layers of visibility. First, you have the sunlight zone, which is the top layer we are in the most, and it's still easy to see in the water while the sun is overhead. Then you have the twilight zone, and the light is now less able to penetrate the water. After that, you have the midnight zone, where it is too dark to see even at high noon because the light can no longer go through the layers of water. The same thing is happening on our Earth's surface, but at a much larger scale. Clouds and water vapor obstruct the light of the sun and it can no longer illuminate your area. Science. Now, I don't know where to go with that other than just to say it's such an obvious, ad hoc, ridiculous explanation that we should just admire it for what it is and move on. But luckily for us, Karen B forgets what she's just said and goes on to debunk that claim in her own video. Oh, no. All right, I'll wait for it. I've not explained what she said yet. Um, so here we join Karen B explaining how the sun rises on a flat earth. See if you can catch her contradiction. And this is simulating the sun over flat water. The light is radiating from the center of the source out in all directions. Look at how the light rays bounce off the reflective surface and off to the distance at an acute angle. So here's our observer again, and you can see the reflected ray reaches our observer before the source does. So, did you catch it? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but I brought along a special guest to explain it to us. Hello, my name is Simon Dan, and here I am on holiday, waiting for the sunrise. Now according to Karen B, here's the sun, but I can't see it yet. I've got to wait until it moves closer in this direction, because at the minute all the light is being blocked out or scattered by water and clouds. You see, Karen B tells me that the light travelling this distance will never reach my eyes, because it's scattered by too much of the atmosphere, so this distance is too far. But guess what? Somehow, according to flat earth magic, if the light travels in this direction, which is even further and reflects off the ocean, then I can see it quite clearly. Oh, it all makes sense. Crazy. Thank you, Simon and Dan. And let's not forget that this explanation by Karen B of how the sun rises over reflective surfaces like the sea doesn't explain at all how the sun rises above non-reflective surfaces like these fields. What do you think of that, Arwen? Oh, no. Okay, time for a recap. So far, Karen B has debunked the flat earth by showing us clouds that are lit from the bottom. She's also debunked the idea that perspective has anything to do with the sunset by showing us a sun that doesn't change its angular size as it sets. Ranty Flat Earth has chipped in by showing us things cannot possibly disappear from the bottom up due to perspective and distance. And then Karen B has debunked her own argument about the atmosphere somehow acting like the ocean by telling us that if sunlight travels a short distance, we can't see it, but if it travels a longer distance, we can. Great going guys, how are you feeling Ranty? 
It's all good. Okay, Ranty, I've got to be honest. All this bad science and all these contradictions make me feel as if you aren't serious about the Flat Earth and you're actually trolling Flat Earthers. Um, just to put the mind of your Flat Earth friends at rest, have you got a message for them? Hello, silly flatties. Oh, hello. Right, um, Karen B does have a final point to make in her video, and rest assured, it is every bit as scientifically valid as everything she's presented so far. All the billions of tiny water droplets behave like a lens. You can emulate this with a lens and a light source like I do here. This candle will take the place of the sun. Watch as I slowly move it back in a straight line, and also it stays at the same height since I have it placed on this mason jar. The atmoplane and your vision create what we call a personal atmoplanic dome, or personal atmospheric dome, if you please, which is the shape of the lens dictated by our eyesight. Okay, so the water droplets in the atmosphere now act as a single solid lens that give the appearance of the sun vanishing below the horizon. Arwin, I see a problem with this. Oh no. I know Arwin, I'm sorry. Must be getting painful for you. Um, anyway, firstly, the amount of water in the atmosphere at any location is not always constant, which means that atmospheric lensing is not always constant. So infamous photographs like this, which show the Chicago skyline mirage as seen from Lake Michigan, are not everyday occurrences. However, the sunset and the predictability of the sunset is an everyday occurrence regardless of the humidity. Oh, no. Now we also see a normal regular sunset in the most dry places with the least humidity in the atmosphere, like this picture of the sunset in the desert. Oh, no. It's almost like your water droplet slash lens explanation for how the sun sets below the horizon is completely made up. However, my favourite part of this whole argument is how you've already debunked it in this very video. Do you even remember saying this? Clouds and water vapour obstruct the light of the sun and it can no longer illuminate your area. That's it, only moments ago you were telling us that the light is scattered by all the billions of water droplets in the air so much that it becomes pitch black in our location. And now you're telling me that those same water droplets somehow act together to make one giant lens with a single focal point. I've got to hear that again. All the billions of tiny water droplets behave like a lens. And now let's change our mind. Clouds and water vapour obstruct the light of the sun. You know, I get the feeling I really shouldn't be asking Arwen how he's feeling right now. Oh, no. You know, come to think of it, Cameron B's whole video would have made a lot more sense if it was just edited down to this. How does the Atmoplane make the sun and other luminaries appear to set below the horizon? We don't understand. There we go. Fixed it for you. Now, I've been Conspiracy Cats and Simon Dan. Thank you. Cats, cats, conspiracy cats. No one quite like him to flatten the flats. So come feel the vibe, like and subscribe, and take off your hats to